In this video, I want to show you how you can implement equality constraints on parameters in the M plus software when you run confirmatory factor analysis, structural equation modeling, or path analysis, or other types of models in M plus. So I want to show you this based on a longitudinal confirmatory factor analysis model that in latent state trait theory we also call a latent state model or a multi-state model because the latent variables here tau1 and tau2 represent the latent states at a given time point and in latent state trait theory a state is a function of a trait score or person specific value and a state residual score which is characterizing the situation and or person by situation interactions. And so in this longitudinal CFA model with those latent state variables or latent state factors, tau1 and tau2, we often want to test whether there's measurement equivalence or we also say measurement invariance across time with regard to the factor loadings, the intercepts of the indicators, and maybe also the error variances. And so the way we test measurement equivalence typically in uh, factor analysis is in terms of equality constraints. So we look at a model where we estimate the parameters freely, and then we also look at a model where parameters are constrained to be equal over time, and then we can compare the model fit to see does it lead to a decline in model fit when we impose, for example, the constraint of equal loadings over time? Now, how do you do that, though? How do you set up a model that has these invariance constraints on the loadings? For example, in M+, you can see here that these loadings have the same index for time or no index for time rather on both time points. So they're assumed to be the same across time for measurement equivalence. And so now we want to take a look at how these constraints can be implemented in the M plus software. Here you can see I set up this exact model with three indicators and two time points. And we have a latent factor tau1 here with the indicators from the first measurement occasion. And you can see that for the second and third indicator, y21 and y31, I added a label L2 and L3 respectively. And so those labels indicate the lambda loadings for indicator two and three. And you can see that I assigned the same labels to y22 and y32 on the factor tau2. And that makes M plus hold those loadings equal across those indicators because they get the same um, label. Now, you could do also just a number. Um, the label really doesn't matter. It's just that the label has to be the same and it has to be in parentheses for M plus to recognize that this parameter is supposed to be the same. Now, you can see that I didn't include anything for the first variable y11 and y12 because the first loading in M plus by default is always fixed to one for identification. And that constraint can be kept as is when you have a loading that's fixed to one for the same variable at both time points. It means that loading is automatically set equal also because it's not estimated and it's the same loading of 1.0 at each time point. So you can go with that and you don't have to include a label for the first variable because that loading is fixed anyway to the same value. Furthermore, you can see here that I also included a constraint on intercepts. And so first of all, what I did here was I picked the same variable for which the loading is fixed to one. So that's our reference or marker variable, y11, y12. And so for this variable, I fixed the intercepts to zero. And so that is an optional constraint. So to say there are other ways to do that, but that's one way to set invariance and to identify the latent mean structure as well, because in longitudinal data, we're often interested in comparing latent means across time. And so this is one way to do this. There are also other ways in which you can do this, but I'm gonna use this way here right now. And so this, what this does is it identifies both latent means of tau one and tau two because the loading for that variable is fixed at one and the intercept is fixed to zero and then automatically the latent mean is identified at both time points for tau one and tau two. And so that's what I'm doing here is I'm estimating both those latent means and then you could compare them across time one and time two. 
furthermore, the remaining intercepts that are estimated are set equal across time. And so that can be done in a pretty straightforward way by putting the same indicator in the same brackets in M plus. So this would be here, first of all, Y21 and Y22. That's the same indicator at both time points. And so then on the same line, you can just put a label A2 and then M plus also knows those two intercepts are supposed to be the same. And then we do the same thing for Y3 also. We give it a label A3 for the alpha or intercept parameter for that um, variable. Furthermore, I also included invariance constraints here on the, on the measurement error variances, epsilon for strict measurement equivalence across time. And that is something that we do for all indicators because none of the error variances are fixed. So even for Y1, we have to give a label E1 here in this case for the error variance for the first indicator and then E2 for the error variance of the second indicator and E3 for the error variance of the last indicator. Again, the, the label doesn't matter. You could also just use the number, th number five or something like that. Um, I just use this label here to correspond to my notation that I'm using for this model. So here you have a longitudinal CFA model with strict measurement equivalence across time. Of course, what you want to do once you run this model in M plus is check in the output that really the parameters have been set equal properly because sometimes we make little mistakes with the labels. We use the same label twice for different parameters or we make some other errors. So you want to check that the degrees of freedom correspond to what you want and that the invariance constraints are also implemented in M plus by looking at the parameters, looking at their standard errors and so on. So this is um, how you can set parameters equal across time. We often do that in longitudinal studies. We do that in multi-group analysis as well when we set parameters equal across group to test for measurement equivalence across groups. And it's a very useful thing to um, know about because often it makes your model more parsimonious. It simplifies your model and those constraints can be quite meaningful. I hope you found this video useful and please uh, sign up for this channel and subscribe. Um, also leave a comment in the comment section in case you have other topics that you would like to see discussed or in case you have any comments on this video and I'll see you next time.